Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve second order differential equations and more specifically how to solve a linear second order homogeneous differential equation that has constant coefficients. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it's one of this form here. Okay, so it's second order, which means our highest order derivative is order 2. So in this case, d2y by dx squared. Okay, so that's the highest derivative we have. It has constant coefficients, which means that these values of a, b, and c are constants. They're not going to be functions, they're just constant values. And it's homogeneous, which means the right-hand side is equal to zero, because it could be equal to some, some sort of function of x, but if it's homogeneous, it's equal to zero. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be writing differential equations of this form like this, okay? So I'm going to use y prime to represent the first derivative and y double prime to represent the second derivative, because that will help me sort of save a bit of time. Now, I'm going to timestamp the different parts of this video because it might be quite long. And by doing that, you'll be able to skip through to whatever part you want to see. And we'll start off by saying, well, how can we even go about trying to solve a differential equation like this? So basically, let's say we'll guess a solution. And you'll see why I make this guess a bit later on. But let's guess a solution. And I'm going to say, I think the solution is y is equal to e to the lambda x. Okay. Well, if that's a solution, let's take the first derivative and the second derivative, substitute them in to our differential equation and see what happens. So we get well, our first derivative is going to be equal to lambda e to the lambda x. And our second derivative is going to be equal to lambda squared e to the lambda x. OK, so and you can work that out for yourself and check by using the chain rule. But those are the derivatives. So let's substitute them in. So we're going to get some constant a multiplied by our second derivative. So lambda squared e to the lambda x plus our other constant b multiplied by our first derivative, so lambda e to the lambda x, plus c multiplied by y, which is e to the lambda x, and that's equal to zero. Now you can see each term here has an e to the lambda x in it, so let's factorize that out of each term, and if we do, we get e to the lambda x is equal, or multiplied by a multiplied by lambda squared, plus b multiplied by lambda plus c, okay, it's gonna be equal to zero. And so you can see we've got two things multiplied together to give zero, so either e to the lambda x equals zero, or this sort of quadratic equation, which we now have, is gonna be equal to zero. So how do I know which one? Because it's either one or both, right? Well, e to the lambda x can never be equal to zero. And if I quickly sketch that graph, you'll be able to see why, because there's no value of lambda you can give me to make this graph equal to zero, because if lambda is positive, my graph is gonna sort of take some variation of looking like that. And if lambda is negative, then it's gonna be flipped or uh, mirrored in the y-axis and look something like that. So there's no value of lambda you can give me to make this graph uh, equal to zero which must mean, okay, that this quadratic is gonna be equal to zero. And this is a really special quadratic equation, okay? It's called the auxiliary uh, equation or the characteristic equation, either or, same thing. And you'll notice something, right? It's a quadratic equation where we have the uh, coefficient of our second derivative, so this is our second derivative, the coefficient of that a happens to be the coefficient of our lambda squared term. The coefficient of our first derivative happens to be the coefficient of our lambda, and the coefficient of y happens to be the constant on the end. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind when we sort of skip ahead to this later on. But basically, right, if I can solve this quadratic equation and find the values of lambda that give me the solution so that it equals zero, well, then I've found some solution to my differential equation. Okay, and we can find this solution, so the value of lambda, by using the quadratic equation. So we're going to take minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Okay, and that's going to give me my two values of lambda, lambda 1 or lambda 2. So there are going to be three different outcomes, okay, and it's going to depend on the discriminant. Okay, and I've written these here. We've got three situations. We could have our discriminant is greater than zero, which means we're going to get two distinct real roots. We could have our discriminant is equal to zero, which means we're just gonna get one repeated root. And we could have b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, which means we're gonna get complex conjugate roots because it's a quadratic equation. And we're gonna look more in depth at each one of these cases now. So for the first one, where we have b squared minus 4ac greater than zero, we've got two distinct real roots, okay? Which means I have two solutions to my differential equation. I've got y1, which is e to the lambda one x, and a second solution, which is e to the lambda two of x. Now, there's this thing, you don't really need to know it for A-level, but it's called the principle of superposition. And that basically says that, well, if, say, y1 is a solution and y2 is also a solution to my differential equation, well, then any linear combination of these 
uh, solutions is also a solution okay and so by linear combination I mean I can take the first solution multiply it by some constant and then add on the second solution multiplied by a constant and that is also equal to a solution and so we could write this as y is equal to well some constant c1 multiplied by e to the lambda 1 of x plus some other constant c2 multiplied by e to the lambda 2 of x okay and now you've got to think, well, this represents infinitely many solutions depending on my constants, right? And again, what I'm about to say, you don't necessarily need to know for A-level. I'm just trying to give you maybe a bit more understanding. So if these two solutions are linearly independent, and by that I mean I cannot represent one as some scalar multiple of another, so I can't take this one, multiply it by some number and get this second one. Well, then if that's the case, then I have what's called like a basis of solutions. So I have every possible solution given to me by the equation that I've got here, if these two solutions are linearly independent. And so what that means is, this will give me a general solution. And so for a differential equation of order n, okay, I need n uh, linearly independent solutions to make my general solution. And so for these second order differential equations we're looking at today, I need to find two linearly independent solutions that I can then take linear combinations of to get the general solution. And the general solution is given as this form here. Okay, so let's take a look at an example, and it'll be pretty easy because we've done a lot of the hard work thinking about it already. So here's the differential equation, and I just want to find the general solution of it. So first off, we're going to find our characteristic equation or auxiliary equation, okay, which is given by lambda squared subtract lambda subtract 6 is equal to 0. So we're going to factorize this to find the values of lambda that make this equal to 0. And if we factorize it, we'll get lambda minus 3 multiplied by lambda plus 2 equals 0. And so we get two distinct real solutions. We get lambda 1 is equal to 3, or lambda 2 is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay. And remembering what we said, well, that gives us two solutions. That gives us, say, y1, which is equal to e to the 3x, or y2, which is equal to e to the negative 2x. And these two things are linearly independent. I can't multiply this by anything to take me to this. And so I could write my general solution as y is equal to some constant c1 multiplied by my first solution, plus a second constant c2 multiplied by my second solution. And that is the general solution to this differential equation. So that's pretty easy. Let's now look at the second case, which is where we have repeated roots. Okay, so we've got a b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So we've got lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. So we'll just call it lambda. So I've got these two solutions here. Okay, and you'll notice that these are the exact same thing, right? And remember what I said, we needed to have two linearly independent sort of solutions. So how can we do that? Well, we can keep the first one, okay? We can keep this y1 equals e to the lambda x, okay? And we could now find y2, and that would be given by, let's rewrite it down here, y2 could be given by x e to the lambda x, okay? Because if e to the lambda x is a solution, well then x e to the lambda x is also a solution. And you can check this for yourself by taking its derivatives, substituting them in, and seeing that it's equal to zero, right? So this uh, new y2, this one here, is also a solution. And now we have a y1 and a y2 that are linearly independent. And so we could write the general solution as y is equal to some constant c1 multiplied by e to the lambda x plus some other constant c2 multiplied by x e to the lambda x and sometimes you'll see this sort of simplified and written as y is equal to c1 plus c2 x multiplied by e to the lambda x and that's the general solution to this differential equation so again let's uh, take a look at an example. So here we have a second order differential equation to solve. So let's write down the auxiliary equation. So we've got lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. And so factorizing this we would get lambda plus 2 squared is equal to 0. And so we get that lambda 1 and 2 or our solutions is equal to lambda is equal to negative 2. Okay. So let's use our general solution to just substitute it in and we get a general solution of y is going to be equal to well some constant c1 plus some other constant c2 multiplied by x multiplied by e to the negative 2x okay and that's the general solution to this differential equation let's now look at the third example which is probably the most sort of uh, confusing maybe which is if we've got our discriminant less than zero okay and that means that we're going to get one solution lambda one which is equal to alpha plus beta i and some second solution lambda two which is alpha minus beta i because they're complex conjugates of each other so that means we're going to get one solution y one which is equal to e to the alpha plus beta i multiplied by x 
and our second solution y2 which is equal to e to the alpha minus beta i x okay so when we're dealing with differential equations usually we want to relate it to something real like the population of, of uh, pe people in an area or maybe some something financial or I don't know something like that and so really it's not that useful to have imaginary numbers or complex numbers right so what we want to do is get rid of that and the way we can do it is just by saying well okay let's write it out like we did before so we've got the general solution y is going to be given by c1 e to the alpha plus beta i x plus c2 multiplied by e to the power of alpha minus beta i x let's now sort of expand in the um, exponent and if we do that we get c1 e to the alpha x and then we could write it as e to the beta x i okay hopefully you're happy with that i've done a couple steps in one plus c2 e to the alpha x multiplied by e to the negative beta x i okay from here I could factorize out my e to the uh, alpha x from both terms and we get e to the alpha x multiplied by c1 e to the beta x i plus c2 e to the negative beta x i okay now we're going to use Euler's formula okay and that says that if we have say e to the i theta then that could be written as cosine theta plus i sine of theta okay and I'm going to use that on these two terms here and so let's do that and we get well this becomes e to the alpha x multiplied by well I'm going to multiply by c1 across both terms as we go so we've got c1 multiplied by cosine of beta x plus i or plus c1 i sine beta x okay plus c2 cosine negative beta x plus uh, c2 i sine negative beta x okay hopefully you're happy with that so now what can we do well I'm going to use two facts I'm going to use the fact that if I have cosine of negative x well that's just equal to cosine of x because of symmetry and I'm going to write these down so we've got cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x okay and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second I can also say that well if I have sine of negative x then that's equal to negative sine of x okay and I'm going to use this on this cosine of negative beta x and this sine of negative beta x to help me rewrite this okay and you'll see why so if i do that we get that y is equal to e to the alpha x multiplied by c1 cosine beta x plus c1 i sine beta of x okay so c2 cosine negative beta x is just equal to well plus c2 cosine beta x okay because cosine of negative x is equal to cosine x and then this plus c2 i sine negative beta of x is equal to negative c2 i sine beta x okay from here i'm now going to factorize part of it okay and i'll rewrite it first to make it clearer to see so we've got e to the alpha x is going to be multiplied by c1 cosine beta of x okay plus c2 cosine beta of x plus c1 i sine beta of x subtract c2 i sine beta of x okay so from here what can I do well I can say that well e to the alpha x multiplied by c1 plus c2 is going to be multiplied by cosine beta of x plus c1 minus c2 i multiplied by sine beta of x okay so this is still equal okay and the reason I've done this is because well c1 plus c2 that's just a constant plus a constant which gives me a constant and c1 minus c2 multiplied by i is also a constant okay and so I'm going to rewrite these I'm going to say let a which is just another constant be equal to c1 plus c2 and let b which is also a constant be equal to c1 minus c2 multiplied by i and so now we've got a general solution y is equal to e to the alpha x multiplied by a cosine beta x plus some other constant b multiplied by sine beta of x and this gives me a nice general solution and so let's take a look at an example question where we have to solve this second order differential equation uh, and find the general solution so we've got our auxiliary equation lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 10 is equal to 0 and if we were to factorize this and solve it we would get two solutions lambda is equal to 3 plus i or lambda is equal to 3 minus i okay and we'll call these lambda 1 and lambda 2 so now we can skip straight ahead to this sort of general uh, solution 
formula, okay? And so that tells me that my general solution y is gonna be e to the alpha x, well, three is my alpha in this case, so we've got e to the three x multiplied by some constant a multiplied by cosine of beta x, well, beta in this case is just the coefficient of i, so it's one, so cosine x, plus some other constant b multiplied by sine of x, and this is the general solution to that differential equation. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more math tutorials. Thanks for watching.